All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Mandy Napier, who is the other side of the world on the gold, uh, on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. How are you doing, Mandy? Hey, good. Thanks, John. Really good. Yeah, and uh, and Mandy's coming to coming to us from the future because I presume it's Friday there right now, is it? It is. It's <laughs> early in the morning or seven thirty in the morning, and it's the most stunning day here. So we're oh, that's lucky. fantastic, fantastic. Well, Mandy is known as the mindset alchemist, uh, a global high performance mindset coach, speaker, educator, and author of Creating Healthy Life Habits. And what we're going to talk about today is why curiosity is the essential habit for business professionals in 2021. So Mandy, when you, when you talk about curiosity, what, what's your definition of that? For me, um, the definition of curiosity is um, a, an open mind and a desire to explore. Um, the actual definition is, is a strong desire to know or learn something, to be inquisitive. And I think that the whole meaning of the word curiosity sort of takes you on this fascinating journey, which just lifts your energy and you, you want to go and, and have a look further. Mm. Yeah, I mean, do you think in some ways that people have maybe become less curious in some ways because, you know, we live in this kind of shortcut culture where everything is supposed to be easy and all of that and, and, and people in some ways maybe have become a little lazy uh, in, and lost some of that curiosity? Yeah, well, I think fundamentally, you know, humans are hardwired to run in habits and fall back into lazy patterns. But I think it really depends on the, the, who you are, like um, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, successful business owners, people that want to grow and become better and improve, I think naturally have a, a sense of curiosity. But if you haven't got any, any passion, any focus, I think it's very easy to just go live by default and let life happen rather than really, you know, grab life and design, design the life that you, you want. Mm. So how can, how can people develop a greater sense of, of, of curiosity? What do you think sometimes holds people back? And um, I think it's perhaps what they don't know, you know, or, or putting up with mediocrity in their life or, or their past patterns and programs. Um, whereas curiosity, you want to be asking questions, you know, that's the whole thing. And the energy of the mind is attention. So where you steer your, your mind, you're going to see new things, but not everybody has a desire to learn and grow and you know what you don't know you don't know so it depends on on, on so many factors as, as to your personal desire for um, achievement and growth yeah no absolutely and and why do you think it is particularly in 2021 that this is such an incredibly important uh, habit to 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 have well i think um you know humans have to adapt with change there's always change and, and as we know in the world there's been massive change and the world as it once you know function doesn't really exist anymore so for mm. business owners in particular so many people have had to completely change the way that they do business now for some people who are entrepreneurs and creative they've easily changed whereas for others um, it's been really challenging so being curious means they have to start asking new questions. You know, how else can I do this? What other ways can we change our business and get our income going? So unless you adopt, you know, the energy of, of curiosity, it, it's hard for people to, to thrive or for some people even to survive, you know, the, the, the current business state for some people. Hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because I, I think in I think in some ways, um, obviously we've been through we've been through a lot of uh, a lot of change, uh, and and just what you said there, I think even even taking a step further back, I think a lot of people need to become more curious about why they do what they do, and why mm -hmm. am I doing what I'm doing in the first place? Yeah, I think so, and I think there's there's so many levels, you know, in business and teams, um, curiosity has been shown to increase engagement, trust, collaboration and productivity, which is awesome. But on an individual level, we're, we're creatures of habit 
and whether we like it or not, we fall back into our default mode and then we get comfortable and then we don't grow in the comfort zone. So it can help us get out of our own way, um, see things differently, find new solutions and also stop us um, our biases and our judgments, which can hold us um, prisoners, I guess, to a particular way of operating in life. Yeah, no, that's a, I think that's a great point. And I think part of what we've been through over the last while is, I mean, we've had, a, a, you know, obviously a major disruption to everything. But I think what it also has has shown everybody is, I mean, these things are going to happen. I mean, hopefully not another pandemic, but these events happen. You know, we had the financial crisis a while back uh, here. We had 9-11. We had the dot-com implosion, all of that. So these things happen. And if you're not looking forward and if you're not challenging yourself and challenging your thinking, then you're going to become a victim of every, every crisis as opposed to... Um, not just kind of prepare for it because obviously you can't prepare for things that come out of left field, but not see it, see these things as an opportunity to actually maybe change or pivot or, or whatever. Yeah. And I think, you know, the, the energy of curiosity is, is, is high in, in one research. I think um, they, they discovered when people talked about a day that they were curious, not happy, but curious, their energy mentally and physically increased by 20%. So the whole energy of curiosity is higher. And as humans, as you know, John, we're all driven by how we feel. So when mm -hmm. we're feeling higher energy, we're more likely to keep looking and find new solutions. And to me, isn't it better to go through life feeling inspired and energetic than, you know, stuck and feeling down and, and unmotivated? So the whole energy of curiosity takes you towards new solutions and possibilities and things that you can't see because we only see a small amount of what's out there in the world and um yeah there's so much more that we don't know you know that's waiting for us mm. yeah and, and it's a great it's a great point too because i think uh if we don't have that then you know we obviously stay stuck and i think that and i think that maybe this last period has reminded people or maybe shone a light maybe they didn't even want the light shone there but the shone a light on on our lives and our, our work and all of that kind of all that kind of, that kind of stuff. So I think it's a great opportunity now to take our, a good hard look at that. And, I, and as you say, uh, I think everybody who's listening or watching could agree with you and think, when was the last time I was really curious about something and how did that make me feel? You know, was I was I frightened? Was I low energy or was I really engaged and, and excited about it? Which is which is what people would be when they're curious but also like how can I how can I get more of that feeling how can I generate more of that feeling well I think that the easiest way to start off increasing your curiosity is to ask yourself better questions you know mm -hmm. the quality of our lives I'm, I'm, I know you know this John is is the questions that we ask ourselves so I teach my clients simple at the end of the day just reflect on your day I have a set of seven questions that don't take long to answer, but they get you conscious and present. And when you review and you write down, you actually lock in and become more conscious, you lock in more memory, and therefore you can be more in, in control of what you're doing. And then we review our week as well. So um, imagine that you're going through your day and something went mm. wrong. So instead of ruminating on it, which is a very easy default pattern that many people do and the brain takes over and blah, blah, it's like, okay, what didn't work here? How else could I have done this? What other solutions might have got me a different result? So when you go back and look at an event that didn't work, you can find some ways of doing it differently. And then if you did have an awesome day or a great win, you can ask yourself, well, what worked here? What sort of mood was I, was I in? What, what did I specifically do? And then you can try and replicate that and take that into the future. So, and as we know as humans, when we achieve and accomplish um, and we tick off goals, we feel good. And then our body sends us a shot of, of serotonin, which makes us feel better. So it all really snowballs um, to build momentum and a high energy state. Hmm. Yeah, and I love what you just said there about the asking yourself good questions, because let's face it, as humans, we always like to externalize everything. So, um, you know, we look for other people to to create the things or we, we look for the problems outside as opposed to using ourselves as a starting point. So I love what you're saying about asking yourself, asking yourself questions. Yeah. 
And I think one of the, the greatest gifts we can give ourselves is to ask ourselves questions about what else could this mean? How else can I see what this person is saying? And, and when we question ourselves how we behaved and how we responded, it can allow us to see ourselves through a new lens and perhaps see where we're not performing as well, rather than, as you say, putting the lens out on someone else, judging um, and, and having a bias about what we see in the world. So it, it's fantastic for our growth, but it also helps us connect and communicate with people. And imagine if we asked better questions and we didn't put our judgment on other people, I'm sure it would make a massive difference in the world, be a bit more open-minded and, and compassionate and flexible. Mm. Yeah, no, ab absolutely. Uh, I mean, and, and obviously, there's one thing asking questions, another thing actually, you know, listening to or waiting for the answers. Uh, because, you know, again, sometimes, you know, we, we think we're good at asking questions, but we don't listen to the answers, whether the answers are coming from ourselves or other people. Yeah, I, and that's such a, a great point. You know, as you say, we can be curious, but we also have to take on what we learn and listen. And um, it's so common in, in conversations, I think, in some research, it's like um, about 40% of conversation is spent waiting um, what to say, you know, working on what someone's going to say. Another 40% is waiting for the gap to say it. And mm -hmm. only 20%, if that, is really listening. So to really embrace curiosity at the fullest level, we also have to set an intention and make sure in our mind we're present and open to receive and absorb what, what we're hearing. So, yeah, that's a, that's a great point, John. Yeah, no, it's it's listening and and understanding because um, I think sometimes people uh, don't understand, you know, the difference between just listening and active listening. Like listening, it's just a it's a it's a physical mechanism or whatever. But but really, like understanding and and listening listening to understand is so much different. Yeah, I, I read something a while ago which did make me smile, and it's about um. I wrote an article on it. Some people get addicted to their own voice. You know, we run in habits, so. You know, I, I know a few people who are like radios, you just talk and they take over the conversation, but it becomes a habit and they that means they're not aware of it. So, you know, unless you're going to self-reflect um, and be brave enough to get feedback, many, many people just talk, as you say, they don't actively listen and it, and it just becomes a rather poor habit of blurting out um, and not really taking information in. Mm. Yeah, and I think the other thing uh, about curiosity, obviously, is uh, we don't know. I mean, not that we ever did, but we don't know what the future holds. And we've been through this, you know, major disruption. And there's definitely, you know, major changes that are, that are happening and will happen in the future. So it's kind of like, as you said, I mean, the essential habit is like if you're not really, really curious right now, if you're not really questioning everything, uh, you know, you're, you're you're really taking a chance because it's only through the curiosity and the questioning that you could even possibly figure out the next best steps to take, given the fact that you have incomplete information. Mm. Yeah, and we, as you say, we might not know the answers, and sometimes we don't know. We don't have a solution yet. If we keep asking the question, you know, how else can I do this? We actually activate, you know, the reticular activating system, like our GPS, in the brain, and it starts to seek and help. And, and, you know, when I look back at, at my clients over the, over the last year, I work with a lot of um, entrepreneurs and, and highly successful um, people, and they've all done pretty well because they have a mindset of never quit and always looking for a solution. And I think people that have a mindset of there's always a solution by nature have to be curious and that's what we need at the moment. You have to know that there's always another way. Nothing lasts forever nothing's permanent and along the way you have to keep yourself in a good energy and and optimistic that there is a solution and of course you have to take action as well you can't just percolate and dream unless you're an einstein and then you can make wonderful <laughs> inventions but you do have to take action as well yeah unfortunately it's not that many einsteins knocking around for the rest of us you know you have to actually put it in put it into practice yeah. um, but it's a great it's a great point that you that you make there though is that the 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 curiosity can't be curiosity for curiosity's sake. Uh, it has to be towards an end. And as you say, you have to actually take it into action um, because it's all very well, you know, as you said, sitting down, sitting around ruminating or pontificating about things. It's another thing entirely about actually putting it into practice. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I think, you know, we imagine that you you ask yourself some questions. It's like maybe one of the last ones is, okay, what do I need to do next or what can I do differently now? Um, and I know, um, you know, in a lot of companies, they might have meetings where they have brainstorming sessions, but it's really important to then have a plan on what to do. But one of the great questions, which is almost the flip side that I know, you know, some um, very um, driven companies have asked is they've sat down and they said, okay, what do we have to do to completely sabotage our goals? Because sometimes we want to look at what, you know, we take what we're doing for granted and that allows us a lens of, well, what are the mundane things that we're doing that we actually need to maintain that if we let slip could actually erode our success and pull us off our goals. And that then gives them a, you know, almost an action plan of what they must keep doing and what they must measure as well. So that's another um, sort of great um, side, I guess, of, of being curious and making sure that you have a clear action plan um, to uncover and see what you what you're actually doing every day that's working. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great point, Mandy. And I and I think the other thing is part of the curiosity. And I think this is this is something that uh, all of us are guilty at of times, and certainly companies are. Is uh, we can we can all be great at coming up with things that we should do and things that we should do differently. We're very bad at coming up with things that we shouldn't do and things that we should stop doing. Yeah. Yeah, and one of my questions, or uh, the four questions that I often ask, um, then these ones aren't mine, by the way, but it's like, you know, what one thing do you need to stop doing? What do you need to start? What do you need to do less of? And what do you need to do more of? But in, in relation to everyone's busy to-do list, it's a really important question to look at them and say, what could I let go of here? You know, and what isn't important or what can I ditch or delegate? And, and it's exactly right because... Less is often more. I had to learn that over the years. I've always, you know, used to be a busy person, but mm. quite often we need to slow down and stop to speed up. And the energy of the mind, as I mentioned, is, is attention. So where we're putting the energy of the mind expands. And if we've got so many things happening, then it's pretty hard to actually, you know, be really focused and achieve the, the best results in, in certain aspects of our business and our life. Yeah, no, I think that's great advice. Absolutely, uh, Mandy, because I, I do think sometimes we spread ourselves too thin. Uh, but the giving up on things, it just seems so hard. I've done this so many times, I've you know, done brainstorming sessions and you say, you know, you know, what, what do we need to do or what can we do? And people just full of ideas, like whiteboards are packed with ideas. And then you say, OK, what do we stop doing? And then there's crickets, right? Everybody goes silent and nobody wants to actually. Yeah. So we're great, we're great at taking on new things. We're terrible at actually sunsetting other things. I think it's that very much comes with an entrepreneurial mindset. You know, people with um, creative energy, it's all about sh shiny objects and new ideas. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, that's what entrepreneurial mindsets love to do. They love to think and come up with new ideas. But sometimes it's harder to go, okay, whoa, stop. We've got all these brilliant ideas. Now we need to get curious as to what do we need to focus on and do next. And that's a completely different shift of energy. It's sort of you take away the creativity and go, right, now we've got to get down to the detail. And that's as equally important in through the lens of curiosity is, is nutting it down and going, okay, it's almost stop being curious. We've got the ideas. What are we going to implement and how is this going to look now? Yeah, um, yeah. maybe get more curious about the implementation part of it. Yes, yes. I, I had to learn that one over the years. Um, <laughs> um, I love ideas too, and sometimes the detail never used to be my thing, but we have to do it, so... Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, Mandy, this has been fantastic. All of Mandy's information is going to be below this video, uh, so you can link to her site and her book and everything. Uh, but before we go, Mandy, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. Sure. Um, well, as you mentioned, I'm a mind and performance coach, and and um, I've been in my business for 13 years, and I love working with um, high achievers. Used to work with some athletes, business owners. Everybody gets stuck from time to time. So my brilliance is helping people get unstuck, discover the patterns, the self-sabotaging patterns, the beliefs, the unseen blocks that are holding them back, the energy that's holding them back and clearing it so that they can step into their full potential and, and grow. And I'm very good on um, routines, disciplines, habits, and incremental improvements and small steps. So 
I think I mentioned, I'll, 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 people will see it on my website, but I, once upon a time I was an iron lady. I've done Hawaii. And, you know, my motto is you never, ever, ever quit. So I'm always going to be there to get people across that line somehow. <laughs> Uh, no, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, listen, thanks again, Mandy. Fantastic advice. And I would um, definitely recommend people to check out Mandy's work. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline or CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.